Hello everyone, thanks for joining the session. We plan for discussing about Python for DevOps. As all of you know, DevOps has something which has become almost mandatory for every organization that we are now working towards, where uh, we can also implement DevOps processes or enable DevOps processes using one of the very famous, most widely used programming language called Python. So the agenda of this session will be, where we'll be discussing about an introduction to Python, so an introduction to DevOps, and why do we need to go for Python for DevOps? Why do we need to use Python for DevOps? And how to use Python for DevOps with some examples? And that's what we're going to see now. So we'll be discussing about introduction to Python. Where what is Python? So Python is one of the open source programming language, which is almost considered to be one of the most widely used or number one programming language, which most of the organizations are using. The way there are multiple reasons why Python has become very famous or which has been used by most of the people. And first thing is that it is open source, which means you can continue to download it for free of cost. You don't need to pay anything for anyone. And it is easy to learn, very importantly. Also, it can help us to implement processor oriented programming as well as object oriented programming. If you take a look at, for example, Java or anything, you'll end up with noticing that most of the organizations will have either implementing or most of the other programming languages will continue to use a programming language like like a Java or anything, which is purely used to implement OOPS concepts. Whereas using using Python, you'll be able to still implement OOPS concepts or either you can also still implement your so-called so -called processor oriented program using Python. So it will give you a lot of flexibility in terms of the way how you can implement it. And it is also having such a huge standard communities where there are huge libraries which are being number of libraries which are being contributed to the open source community where if you want to make use of selenium automation testing for example you have libraries to do that if you want to implement data engineering you have libraries to do that and you want to implement devops processes we have libraries to do that if you want to create some gui based products we have libraries to do that if you want to implement data engineering we have libraries if you want to create some visualizations we have libraries if you want to Implement machine learning algorithms, we have libraries. Likewise, almost for everything, almost for everything, including whatever the libraries that you want to make use of. And Python has libraries created and they have extensions which can be easily built using Python. That's where most of the organizations are preferring to use Python because all the integrations will end up with becoming very easy. And if you are able to using Python and implementing or coordinating with other teams or also making the developers or bringing the developers will also be, become very easy. So what are the features of Python? So there are a number of features. One is like simple, very simple. As I said, it's open source, it's very portable. And uh, it's a emulated um, um, and which is extensible. You can also say, for example, a lot of organizations, especially if you take banking sector or the finance sector, a lot of organizations are having heavy dependency with legacy systems. And most of those systems would have been implemented using something called C or C++ like that. If you want to extend, uh, extend them also, you can also do that. And it is interpreted. You don't need to compile it separately. The moment that you, that you execute your code, the command line interpreter will help us to implement it very easily. It has such a huge libraries, like none of the other programming language has got. And also, as I said, you can also implement your OOPS concepts also, which is very easy to do. So likewise, because of this number of users, number of advantages that we have, and we can continue to develop, that's where most of the developers are also finding it easy to move to Python and also organizations as well. And who uses Python? Almost all the topmost technology companies. It's not that okay, something that okay, hey, only uh, only uh, startup companies or the very small organizations are using. Almost all the topmost companies are using Python nowadays. So what is DevOps? So DevOps is something which is the latest way how every developer in every organization, almost every organization, everybody is working, which will make sure that you will maintain your proper code base, and if you Want to deploy your changes from one environment to another environment. Earlier, people used to take a very lengthy process of manually having an admin people or there's some people that, who can help us to actually move changes from one environment to another environment if there are some issues which happens. People should we used to take some very longer time to make some changes and make sure that okay everything will run smooth or anything. Whereas it used to take very longer time. But nowadays, if you take a look at it, the way how the DevOps processes are implemented, by within a day itself, there are tens or hundreds of deployments or PRs which are getting raised. And the development deployment process has become something which is very easy and can, people don't need to waste unnecessary time. So with which the, the, the effectiveness of the developers has increased to a very huge extent. And earlier, if you see, for example, if I want to do a production deployment, I may have to spend more than a week, I may have to wait for something called a deployment time 
when that means you are going to log this or log the code base and then start doing all this extraction and doing the upload uploads whereas it is not required nowadays and you can continue to do the deployment very easily and where everything can be handled very easily using devops either be it or be it the concept of deploying your code and making sure that you will maintain your versions if something goes on you'll be able to immediately revert back your changes even if the people are not available or else if you want to maintain your infrastructure itself as a code okay say for example if some disaster recovery has happened disaster has happened you want to make sure that you want recovery systems or you want to rebuild your application and application instead of you doing it manually you can make use of infrastructure as a code which means that your entire infrastructure itself can be created as a code so that's why all, all the organizations are moving towards creating devops processes that will make sure that their platform will run smoothly without having any deployments sorry without having any issues with the deployments so why python has to be considered so considering that devops is almost becoming mandatory in almost almost everywhere if you be it be it something on a uh, development phase or be it something on testing phase be it something on a data warehousing side or be it something on data engineering or other data scientist four is going to use including selenium manual testing and everything every developer across the globe are actually started using something called python and somewhere people are having some relations with python you know to make sure that they will, the integration will happen smoothly the multiple process will run smoothly so because most of the things are running in are expected to be running in python at least in the future or or in the current the way how the projects are being taken care now in making sure that devops process also can be implemented using python so there are a number of tools there are a number of different different tools which can help us to do a lot of activities so where if you see for example what is csv continuous integration and continuous development basically if you wanted to maintain multiple versions let's assume a scenario where uh, a number of developers are actually working for for your project there are so many uh, people will continue to contribute for your project so now as i said you know it's not to okay every application will end up with having some code base right so either be it a data warehousing team either be it web applications or be it back end applications you'll end up with having so many scripts so many automation script or be it a powershell or be it anything be it .net or be it java or be it a python or anything and obviously you cannot continue to maintain the local versions everyone has to deploy their code into something called some git repository or anything any repositories to make sure that the people will maintain the multiple versions of the code if something goes wrong and they can report back the changes and making sure that who has made the what changes and everything will has to be maintained there are multiple ways which people can maintain it there are multiple platforms which are supporting to maintain your code base with your versions and everything whereas whenever you have say for example as a developer i'm going to make some changes in my local machine right as a developer i'm going to make some changes in my local machine so i cannot make sure that all the changes that i run in the local machine will continue to work in test environment where after the testers has developed it and maybe i may have to use it move that to user acceptance testing where users might have a different environment to make sure that okay they will run, they will also run smoothly and then we'll be deploying the same changes into something called production so every environment cannot continue to be same because there might be some updates which are happening in one environment which may not be impacting in other environment and then when you make some changes it will continue to fail or else for example if you in your test environment you might end up with using test database in your user acceptance you might end up with using a different database and who will make sure that all your database connections and everything will change properly where you cannot continue to make all the changes manually and so one has to take your code base from one environment and making sure that everything has can will be updated automatically without having any issues so there should not be any manual errors or anything to make sure that all those things will happen and we have will end up with using the cicd process which will make sure that all your code any changes that any developer makes it and you will be able to make sure that okay you'll be able to review the changes and able to approve it so that your code base can continue to move from one environment to another environment while moving your changes from one environment to another environment and obviously you cannot say like okay hey uh, you're not completely 100% rely on one person or or a group of people who might be making changes in one environment it might be that we may have to execute certain steps say for example if you when you are running a web application i must make sure that okay at least few functionality should run okay there is a web application which i deployed it should make sure that okay at least okay someone has made changes and it should not start correcting your existing database or anything i should not start up updating some tables which which is not supposed to happen and you will end up with having some test cases to make sure that uh, there are some functionality tests that you will end up with doing and which make sure that okay your code is not going to unnecessarily touch anything which is which it should not so you can add all such test cases as part of your deployment okay so once someone has approved the changes okay whether say for example you have some vendors and you have been working from with the vendor team and vendors might keep changing keep making some changes okay even if that happens even if they approve it you should make sure that okay it is not going to if at all something went wrong 
before I deploy the changes, I should be able to detect it automatically using the test cases that I have written, and so that people can take a decision whether to move the changes into production or not, instead of you making everything automated, which might happen knowingly or unknowingly. We don't know. Because you are supposed to keep on monitoring your applications continuously, and if something somewhere goes down, and then you should be able to get some proper alert so that people will be respected, people will be able to take a decision according to that. So that's where, in order to make sure that all these all these implementations can be done, that's where we end up with having something called a DevOps process, which can also be done very well using Python as a programming language. And you'll be able to implement mul multiple activities of start doing your development, and then start doing your testing, and then deploy, monitor, and can you get the feedback. And all these processes must be automated as much as possible because you cannot cut, start building or depending on a human and which might end up with spending too much of time or either which who might end up with uh, having or having some issues because a human being, you cannot expect that okay, a human being may not do any mistake. There might be chances that okay, a human can do mistakes. And of course, humans tend to do mistakes. And we should make sure that okay, what what a maximum, whatever the maximum automation that we should be able to do so that the things will continue to run smoothly without having him much human intervention. So we'll end up with using such automated tools, which can also make sure that, okay, we'll be able to make use of all the automations which are possible, so that it involves with a very less amount of manual effort, either be it any step that we're talking about. And of course, there are multiple languages which can help us to do, or like Ruby or anything. And of course, consider comparing to that, Python is something which will take a major advantage, considering that, okay, Python is something which is having most of the extensions which are created. You can do a lot of automations very easily. And also on top of it is also one of the easiest programming language which is used almost everywhere. So what is the structured learning? Which means Edureka is also considering the advantages and Edureka is obviously on top of whatever the latest technologies which are available. And, uh, and you can also start learning these courses from Edureka and there are multiple modules which are being planned. So whenever you start learning, the roadmap path will be, you'll end up with start learning something called Python initially and we'll start learning sequences and file operations and deep dive into functions and object oriented concepts and then you start learning numpy and later you'll start learning something called pandas which is used for data manipulation and then matplot library which are and then you'll start learning graphical user interface programming and then you'll start learning how do we handle exceptions and how do we play around with the exceptions right and these are the multiple things that you'll end up with doing learning and then, and then you will start learning developing web maps and presenting information using plots so how do you do that and then you'll start learning computer vision using OpenCV and evaluation using basic techniques. But what these are the multiple techniques that you'll end up with learning, right? So this is the overall roadmap that you're going to learn. So in case if you any one of you wanted to learn, you can be part of it. Okay. So how to use Python for DevOps in that case? So whenever I start learning something called Python, so what are the ways? How exactly you can make use of Python in you know, order to develop DevOps processes? So as I said, there are multiple automations. There are which means uh, so. Every, there, there are some libraries which are available and which like uh, so git api there are some apis which uh, which are present as part of uh, python so you can use git this git apis whenever we have some uh, any changes which are happening in any other environment and we can make sure that we'll be able to write some some of the bash commands or the powershell commands which can be utilized uh, from python perspective or to make sure that okay hey you now there's a change which happens we'll be able to start making some changes and start deploying the changes directly into what i environment. And apart from that, we also have some operating system or sub processes, and which can also be can be handled very well using uh, using the methods which are available. Which means anything related to your environment specific, anything related to network specific, or operating system or sub process modules or other operating system specific uh, specifications can be handled very well using. There are also some other applications like Boto or GCP. So likewise, you have a number of uh, cloud technologies that also are providing some uh, multiple APIs that can actually help us to start integrating their applications with Python. And they're creating extensions to make sure that everything can, can run smooth. And obviously, needless to say, as part of the test, uh, testing part, and we have a number of uh, libraries which can be very very well, uh, can be integrated using like Selenium, and which Python also has a very huge amount of libraries which can help us to do. And apart from that, if you want to connect to any other databases, and obviously, Python has something called a huge amount of uh, libraries that can help us to connect to almost any databases including NoSQL, so including uh, RDBMS systems or anything. So by, with the help of all these multiple modules and multiple libraries which are already available, and we'll be able to make use of some other app tools or other, any other libraries like Cuisine or their fabric, and which will help us to create some uh, recruitment or automate all the DevOps process and everything. Uh, be it a, a cloud system or be it a platform as system, and whatever the type of technology that we have, we can, we can continue to make use of Python, and it can help us to implement all these DevOps processes very easily.
So thank you all. Thank you very much. I'm closing the session. All the very best for your future. Thank you.